In today's episode of The Daily Show, we speak to Dolphins head coach Imran Khan. It was a very interesting conversation that we got to have with him uh, about his coaching career and how it started, the transition from being a player into the coaching arena, as well as his successful season last season with the Dolphins, which saw them win the four-day competition and share the the one-day cup. Now, he spoke a lot about his philosophies and what he thinks about it, and as well as what the role of assistant coach is, and what it was like to obviously be assistant coach to Grant Morgan um, when Grant was the coach of the Dolphins. So we got into an interesting conversation with Imran about his career, about the future, about the youngsters in the setup, and about the Dolphins and what their aims are for the next season. So it's a very, very entertaining episode. I really enjoyed having a chat with him. He was very laid back, very humble as expected, but... Um, we got the information that we needed in this particular interview. It's something that I think that all of you guys can really learn from and really benefit from. If you're new to this channel and it's the first time that you're here, please subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell for all future videos, and become a part of our community too by subscribing to our digital magazine. It's a monthly magazine, 100% free. Every single issue comes straight to your inbox. All the back issues, 100% free. Click the eye on the top of the screen to subscribe right now for free. Now, let's get straight into today's content. Hey guys, welcome to The Daily Show. I'm your host, Khalid Mohid, and this is my co-host, Aditya, and we're joined by a special guest. We've got Imran Khan, Dolphins head coach, with us today, and I'm so excited to speak to him, one of the up-and-coming coaches in the country, I mean, coming off a successful season with the Dolphins, which you'll probably be very humble about, but let's get into the conversation. Uh, uh, let's start this conversation with, I always go with the, your beginnings and how you got into coaching. We, we know about your playing career history. We know that you played for the Proteas in a test match. We, we, we know about that side of, of, of the game. But I like to know the transition and what was your thought processes on making that transition from going from a player into that coaching role? Okay. Thanks for having me, uh, Khalid. Uh, looking forward to the conversations. Um, yeah, so in my final year as a, as a professional cricketer, um, I sort of gone into my intention was always to stay in the game in some capacity. I was actually considering umpiring as well. Um, so I was doing my coaching badges, um, my level three certificate. And within that final year, I think it was, I think it might have been Grant Morgan's first year as um, as the head coach of the Dolphins. Um, sort of mid season, they he was looking for an assistant coach. Um, I was, like I said, was doing my level three and was approached by the the board here at KZN um, asking me if I'd be interested in filling the post, uh, you know, for the for the remainder of that season. Um, obviously, it was a fantastic opportunity to work with a guy like Grant. Um, I guess very lucky uh, in many ways to start off at the, to get that opportunity at uh, at professional level. And um, yeah, I guess from there it uh, sort of just uh, kicked on. So I want to start my questioning with with that exact question with that exact um incidence because when i come across what has been happening recently in south african cricket we we've been talking about assistant coaches etc and the roles but i just want to know from your perspective what the role of an assistant coach is and and what was it like from a grant being with grant morgan because i mean i've had a conversation for, with him before and his cricket brain is just insane like the way he thinks about the game is just insane so um that's what i picked up for my interview with him it was quite a long time ago but being an assistant coach what is the role i guess it will be different according to which who your head coach is but what was it like to be an assistant coach and what should be your role as an assistant coach would you say look i mean i think um in in my sort of uh situation obviously being the first coaching position um that um i was in the intention on my behalf was to obviously grasp and learn as much as possible from uh, from Grant. I think he's he's a senior and a proven coach, uh, great pedigree behind him. Um, and I sort of adopted the approach of, of learning as much as I possibly can, to work as hard as I possibly can, and obviously to help and support the head coach, to be the ears, the eyes. Um, more often than not, your, your players 
sort of gravitate towards the assistant coach um, naturally because I guess the head coach makes the tough decisions, uh, you know, and to try and control the, the changing room space, um, keep it in a good, uh, healthy state. Um, so, yeah, I think those were sort of my focus points initially as, um, as, a, as, as a head coach to, to support, help and, uh, and ensure that uh, the team is moving in, in one direction. Hi, Imran. Welcome. Uh, my question is, when, when, when you're an assistant coach, how much, how much say do you generally have in strategy? And what do you, what do you aspire to sort of grasp about, you know, like human resource management and, and things like that? Because as you said, I guess one of the advantages of being an assistant coach is that players tend to gravitate towards you. So how do you get, a, how do you get better at uh, man management then? Look, I think obviously a lot of that stems from the relationship that you have with the head coach. Um, I think it's important to have that understanding uh, and conversation straight up. Um, and I guess my, I've always had a good relationship with Grant. I worked with him prior to sort of the final years of my career at Inland, KZN Inland. So he understood me. I understood the way he worked. Um, and he kind of knew that I was not going to be just a yes man. Obviously, I would challenge him from, from a strategic and tactical thinking point of view. Again, but at the end of the day, it's important to understand your position. You're the assistant coach. You're there to help, to assist, and uh, and 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 do the hard work. And final decisions will always be, um, you know, be the head coach's uh, decision. Um, it's to, I think understanding that for me is is critically important. Um, else, it can be a very uh, um, tough situation uh, or relationship to manage. I guess. You know, from a cricketing point of view, we've we've seen a dramatic change in the way cricket is played, you know, the way attitudes have changed towards the game uh, over the last 10 years or so, particularly with T20. And I, I was wondering that with South Africa also having gone through a similar transition from the so-called golden age to, um, to an inexperienced team that is now being rebuilt, how have you sort of seen that process? How has your coaching evolved in that process? Yeah, look, I mean, I think in my short uh, coaching uh, sort of career thus far, it's, it's very evident to see the younger boys that, that do come through the systems are very well in tuned uh, with the white ball, white ball uh, sort of formats. Obviously, I mean, I think in, in, in our system in South African cricket, our focus is primarily on white ball cricket. Um, so the challenge is getting guys adapted to the longer versions of the games, um, you know, doing the very basic uh, training with these boys understanding game plans, etc., from a batting perspective. Um, it's not easy. I mean, I think the way the game has evolved over the past years, over the past few years, is pretty evident. It's becoming uh, shorter, faster, more powerful. Um, you know, that's just uh, the way the game is going. We've got to stay current, but we've also got to somehow try and find ways of instilling the basics and, um, um, you know, the basics within, within these young boys that come through the system. Ultimately, I think the basics and a strong foundation um, you know, will stand you in good stead across all formats of the game. It's good that you brought that up um, because it is so fitting that because of you winning that four-day competition, the last one that we've had available to us. So it's so important that we, we talk about this because we've constantly spoken about how we're going to create the next generation of test cricketers in the country. Um, I've had lots of conversations with the youngsters. I mean, some of the guys are in your team as well, um, likes of Bryce Parsons now. Um, we've got, um, obviously, you've got the likes of Tando and Tini, you've got Lifa and Tanzi, all of these youngsters that are available. Ruan Swat as well, very, very talented player, as you would know yourself. But when we, when I spoke to these youngsters, a lot of them said that there maybe wasn't enough um, opportunities at school level to, to play the longer format of the game. So when you, the step up is so massive. So when we do see youngsters like, for example, Vian Mulder come through the system and make his debut for the Proteus at such a young age, it's it's um, it's amazing from our standpoint because, I mean, where did they learn how to play the longer forward of the game? So we, there's a lot of guys in your setup too that are doing that that doing that as well. I mean, a guy like Grant Rudolfson, the way he's developed his game and and became such a focal point in the team and as, as an opening batsman and as a wicketkeeper batsman as well, both ways <laughs> it can be... It can be very tricky to do that um, and learning your craft at the highest level. So what do you put in place to help the youngsters coming through the system that to take that next step? 
Look, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of our focus points at the Dolphins is on the foundations, on the basics. Um, I feel like a lot of a lot of the players within our structures are naturally um, uh, talented, um, very aggressive, flair sort of players from a batting perspective. So we we tend to focus a lot on making sure we have a sound foundation, uh, strong basics, because that allows the player to then just you know play his natural game uh, from a position of strength. Um, so. We do encourage players to be themselves, but we also encourage players to make sure that we, you know, we're emphasizing and putting a strong focus on on, on making sure we, as tough as possible, initially in our batting um, space or when we walk walk to the crease. Um, so yeah, foundations for us is key. You know, I once read in uh, I think Herschel Gibbs's book when he said that uh, at one time in in the eighties. Uh, the Kings Mid used to be the fastest wicket in in South Africa, and that has that's obviously changed over a period of time. But it's now it's a seeming wicket, and it's also sort of spinner friendly. How do you how do you get players to to build a holistic game? You know where they're equally comfortable against pace and spin because we've we've seen that teams these days, particularly non subcontinental teams, tend to struggle with spin in the subcontinent. So how do you equip players with those skills? Look, I mean, from a strategic point of view, um, you know, we had looked at what we had uh, within our squad and we obviously possessed a very strong spin bowling uh, component. Um, and that kind of determined our strategy. So from a training and preparation point of view, it was clear that we needed to put uh, a lot of emphasis and uh, focus on improving our spin play as a batting unit. Um, so we did that uh, through the skills, uh, through skill sessions, through the winter. Um, the boys bought into the to the concept or to the philosophy of playing on uh, spinning surfaces, and um, you know, I mean, I think the results uh, show for themselves. The guys adapted to the conditions and played some really good cricket. The challenge, I guess, for us as a as as a unit, if I look at the two years that we've sort of been together as a management team, in year one we kind of struggled in the high felt which is the complete opposite conditions to what we uh experience on the coast um especially at king's mead um so we had i mean we had conversations around how we wanted to approach our game on the high felt and and we try we tried to prepare as best as we possibly could um for those situations and um again i think the guys showed great resilience it's not easy i mean to adapt from from a spinning surface onto a fast bouncy pitch is it's it's a challenge and 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 I think a lot of it is is credit to the boys for adopting the right mindset and resilience um, away from home. Now, without revealing too many of your secrets, I want to ask you this question because we know that in the in the last couple of tournaments, particularly the four-day anti twenties, you guys had proteas available to you. Now, from my experience talking to Keshav and like the likes of David. They are guys that are really looking to help the next generation improve their game. But we never get the opportunity to actually visually see it as fans. So I would like to ask you from your experience, looking at them as two role models in the team and being Proteus players like they are with the experience that they have, what have they done to like try and help the others in the team, the other youngsters in the, in the side? I mean, obviously Keshav um, for your spinners and and. I mean, he, he will call himself a batter too, and I think we will all call him an all-rounder too. <laughs> and uh, we've got David Miller, who is now the finisher for South Africa. They've been talking about him being a finisher, but we all know that he can contribute a lot more in up the order and around. But I want to know from your eyes what you've seen in the, in, in the changing room and on the field. What sort of things do they do to help the youngsters? Actually, what do they actually go about doing? I mean, I think the first thing for me that stands out is that they're great human beings. They're great guys, so they're very approachable, easy to talk to. Um, secondly, I would say it's the, I mean, the work ethic. They're the fittest in the team. So that's a great example already for a lot of the youngsters that come into the Dolphin setup. Uh, you know, you've got two guys at, at, at the peak of their, of their career still wanting to be the fittest and, and, and work the hardest at their, at their games. Um, and then, you know, like I said, they, they, they're such good guys. They, they, they're very open to having conversations and willing to assist guys in, develop their, in developing their own, uh, you know, their own games, um, which, is, which is great. They, they proudly case it in boys as well. So I guess that helps. They, they invested in, uh, in the system and, and wanting to see the province uh, ex excel. Um, 
but I think the biggest thing for me is just that they're good human beings and they, and they, you know, they're prepared to just give off a lot of information that they've learned over the years and accumulated over the years and pass it on to the next generation, which is fantastic. You know, with the T20 World Cup coming up in a couple of months, you know, we've been talking a lot about uh, the different roles in that team. And I was wondering, uh, what's, what's, your, I, what's your view on sort of building 360, 360 players? You know, how do you, how do you train someone to do that? I guess, the, look, I mean, it's a difficult question. My answer would be repetition. I think you've got to expose or create an environment where you're exposing players to the different skills. Um, ultimately, a player doesn't necessarily have to use those skills within a match situation. But, um, you know, if he's in a pressurized moment and he, he then has the belief and the confidence to execute a specific, uh, a specific shot because he's done the work. So... I think it's about having those conversations with players. Sometimes a player can be very, um, you know, set in his in his way or in his thinking, but it's to have those conversations to broaden horizons and to create more options for you for yourself as a cricketer. And finally, from me, um, I would like to know the the difference, or not necessarily the maybe the difference, but when do you, as a coach, there's different roles or different types of coaches, of course. I want to know a little bit about your philosophy because some coaches tend to be quite hard on their players and try, that's how they try to get the best out of them, where, where others are a lot more of the guys that put their arm around a player and, and try to nurture them and, and get the best out of them. But I guess also, if you look at football and from my football background, what I love, I love Man United and the way that's been, they've been coached and I look went deep into those type of things and also talking to other coaches in the industry, what I've come to notice in this professional sport is that certain players react differently. So is there a different balance that you approach things with? Do you have a little bit of times where you say, hey, you know, get on the player and be more aggressive? Or are you this a, someone that, that sticks to the same sort of philosophy with all of you guys? Yeah, look, I mean, I think the, that's always a challenging question. You know, the, the, the reality is in, in, in a team environment, you're working with sort of, look, in our case, we're working with 20 players every Everybody is different. Everybody reacts to information differently. Um, you know, so what I try and do is, you know, just be myself. I mean, I think if I'm uh, not trying to be somebody that I'm not, um, I think I'm, uh, you know, I'll be uh, able to get through to a player a little bit more uh, than I guess if I was if I was using an approach that's not um, true to myself. Uh, you know, if I can call it that. In terms of a philosophy, look, my our whole focus point here at the Dolphins is really making sure that everybody everybody buys into a team first ethos, um, and that's got nothing to do with your skills. It's got nothing to do with uh, your uh, your physical attributes. It's just making sure that you're putting onto the table more than you're taking off. Um, that's what we strive for as uh, from an environment and a culture perspective here at the Dolphins. For me, it's very difficult to say uh, specifically um, or, or to specifically have a a game philosophy because I feel cricket's a lot different to football and rugby. You know, football and rugby, you play on the same dimensions, the same 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 sort of uh, uh, field specs. Whereas cricket, you know, the ball bounces differently on different conditions. So you you're gonna have you, you know you have to adapt to the conditions that's in front of you. Um, but I think the big thing for me is just you know focus on a team first ethos. Um, I think if we um, you know we continue to get that right more often than not, you generally tend to produce decent results guys are willing to go the extra mile for each other and um, I guess that's where that, that's the space you want to try and be in um, you know as a as a team finally I'd, I'd like to ask you who in test cricket in particular um, who who do you think are leading batters and bowlers at the moment and uh, have you been following the India versus England series? I must be honest. I'm one of those guys that don't watch, that doesn't watch a lot of cricket. Um, I can't remember when was the last cricket game that I actually watched. Uh, much rather watch football. I'm a Liverpool fan, by the way. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but look, I, I think Kane Williamson for me stands out. I think he's a fantastic leader. Um, his record across all formats speaks for itself. I think what New Zealand have done 
uh, in world cricket over the last few years has been astonishing um, for a nation that is uh, a small nation such as New Zealand. Um, you know, they've punched above their weight and they are now probably a, a force in, in, in world cricket. So from a batting perspective, I think Kane Williamson. Um, I think bowling-wise, I mean, you can't um, deny what Jimmy Anderson is doing. I mean, at uh, 39 years old, the guy is still an absolute machine, uh, yeah. producing performances like he is at the moment. I believe he's on a three for currently. Um, so, I mean, that's just something phenomenal. Um, I think that speaks into looking after your body, professionalism, um, you know, all those um, fancy little words. Um, but Shane Afridi is also a special talent. Um, I think he's had a fantastic uh, series against the West Indies. Incredible performances, consistent performances over the last couple of years. So he's definitely one to look out for uh, from a left arm perspective. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Timmy, for coming on the show. I really enjoyed this this episode. I would obviously like to get you on in the future if you enjoyed it. So, guys, please give um give this video a like, a comment, a share, and all of those things, and subscribe to the channel. But you know what you have to do because, as we said, this is aligned with our latest issue of the magazine. So, this is about coaching in South Africa, and we needed to get the best coaches on this show and we're trying our best to reach out to as many as possible but you know what you have to do you click that eye on the top right of the screen and that's how you'll get your free issue and it's 100 free all editions back issues as well so don't forget to subscribe to the latest issue of the magazine thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you guys again very very soon